So, hi and welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for attending the session. I know it's uh, Fridays and the conferences are always the best, the worst uh, days to have a session in the morning. Um, my name is Alofo Garcia and I am uh, one of the uh, tech leads with Kubernetes Secret Release. Um, so, just a little bit about me. I worked uh, for my whole life uh, for my own company and then they, until the pandemic hit and had to um, switch jobs and uh, I am now a senior DevOps engineer at Mattermost. Um, I have two little girls and I also like to uh, travel the world with my bicycle whenever I can. And um, so at the beginning of this year, I led the effort to produce an s bomb for Kubernetes. Um, all right, so let's start a little bit to, to talk a little bit about uh, SIG release and what we do. So SIG release is the special interest group uh, that does the Kubernetes releases. Whenever you, uh, you see a new Kubernetes patch release or a new version coming out, uh, we are the guys that uh, work to make that happen. Uh, so we also uh, form the Kubernetes release team um, that is uh, managed by uh, the Kubernetes uh, uh, release lead who's joining us today here, hi Ray. Um, and we also uh, manage uh, the actual decision of what goes, uh, what goes, get, what gets cherry picked uh, to the supported branches of Kubernetes. And uh, the the other thing we do that is uh, maybe worth uh, considering today is that we are in task of continually improving the Kubernetes release process to keep it up to date to practices and best uh, and best practices and standards that can keep coming up. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit uh, before we go into the Aspen thing about what is in a Kubernetes release. Uh, I wanted to go briefly into this because um, the uh, Kubernetes release uh, has uh, many different kinds of artifacts, many different ways of distribution. And uh, so uh, we think it's a good example of uh, why uh, having an SBOM is a beneficial thing for a project of this size. So the, most people are used to have, uh, consuming Kubernetes by its uh, container images. We produce um, uh, five different images for five different uh, architectures. And if you cross that together, you get 25 images, but there's a lot more to a Kubernetes release than just the images. Um, we, those images are produced, uh, we support three different operating systems, Linux, macOS, Windows. Uh, we uh, have, we build some of the artifacts and the images for uh, the, what we call the supported platforms, uh, which are currently the 386, AMD, ARM, ARM64, uh, the PPC68 and as the IBM S390X uh, uh, platform. We, as I said before, we have 25 images with each release. Uh, we produce 53 naked binaries. The naked binaries are what you, whenever you download, for example, a, cube, a copy of kubectl, a cube call ready to run, that is one of the, that, that's what we call a, a, a naked binary. Same thing for kubeadm, et cetera. Uh, we also have a bunch of tarballs, uh, which bundle together some of the components of the of our whole Kubernetes system, uh, which are called client node server and test. And uh, for example, if you download, if you want some, some of those, the client side of, uh, of the tarballs includes kubectl and uh, the node contains the binaries uh, that, that run uh, the kubelet and so on. And then we produce a source uh, code tarball uh, with the, the source code up to the point where we chose to, uh, the commit that we chose to cut the release. Uh, the RPMs and the packages and also file with release notes. Um, so our mission is to provide guidance and tooling to facilitate the production of automated releases. Uh, if you take a look at this uh, statement, mission, mission statement, it doesn't specifically say Kubernetes in it. That is why we uh, try to produce some of our tools uh, as, and make, make them as general purpose as possible. Uh, if you may, you may be familiar with the release notes, which is the, probably the, the most popular, if, well, if I can call these things popular, uh, project uh, in, in utility that we release. Uh, it's used by a bunch of other projects uh, to generate their, their release notes. We also uh, publish as a general, uh, um, 
purpose tool, the, the builder that controls the Google Cloud builds. Uh, then we have a, a thing called uh, publish release, which uh, allows you to upload and sync your releases with GitHub. And finally, the bomb tool, which is the thing that we're talking about today. So, uh, the SBOM definition. So, I think uh, this is uh, the previous definition right now. This is the preferred, it has been updated since. Uh, but I wanted to more than take a look at the actual uh, SBOM definition, uh, tell you a little bit of what I think, how I see the bill of materials. So, when you see a bill of materials, you have, it's a document that lists uh, the components in a, in, a, in a software release and it allows you to determine the relationships uh, among them. So if you think about a warehouse like this, um, a bill of materials will, would really quickly allow you to determine where things are. If you, if you want to ship a, a complex, uh, a multiple item order, you could easily find out and pick them up uh, from, from the boxes. But the way, uh, an important thing to note here is that we are SIG release, we are not SIG SBOM. So what, uh, what our focus is more on how we can actually describe a more complex um, release that spans many distribution channels and can serve artifacts. So I, I tend to think about the release a little bit more like this, like a market. So if you think about a market, you probably can find some of the items that sell there in different presentations. So if you think, for example, you may have a tomato and that tomato can maybe available uh, in its raw form for you to buy by the, by the weight, or you can maybe could find the transform to a salsa inside of a sandwich or different presentations. And for me, a uh, software release is kind of the same thing. So if you remember the, the kinds of artifacts that a Kubernetes release produces, we have uh, the same components packaged in different ways. So we, we have uh, the, if you think about kubectl, it's available in an RPM package as a binary inside of the node table, or even in source code if you want to consider it like, the, like, uh, like a consumable. So um, there's a thing to consider when you start building your SBOM. You, the first thing that you will do, you start thinking about the SBOM is, uh, so you take your document, and the first thing that you would add to it is your source code. And uh, in a project like Kubernetes, the SBOM lists about 24,000 files, if, if I remember it correctly. So just by listing all the files in the source code, you get a long, long list. Then you start adding, for example, uh, your container images, and then you add your binaries. Then you add more binaries and your packages, and then the dependencies, the transient dependencies, and then all of a sudden you get everything in there except for the kitchen sink, or maybe you do have the kitchen sink like in the picture. And um, so what I, what we chose to do is to, to start thinking, so we, the first SBOM that we produced was a single uh, monolithic file. So we've been thinking about other ways uh, that we may split the SBOM into more consumable, uh, uh, documents, more linear ways of doing it. So I tend to think about uh, a way that we could uh, produce linear SBOMs for what could potentially consume them. So if you think about uh, the source code, maybe that would go into a, some kind of source code tool like code search, things like that, that could, could uh, actually uh, take advantage of the large number of items that, that are in there. So the uh, same thing with containers. Uh, the container images um, could be better suited for things that will actually consume the container images. So if you think you could have like a, an admission controller in Kubernetes that would check the, the container images coming uh, to make sure that everything is in place or that to match them against a certain vulnerability so, and so on. And same thing for the binaries. The binaries are intended for the operating system, so it would make sense to check them in there, RPMs, so on. So our, uh, if you were at the keynote this morning, you're aware that there are two great uh, efforts going on to uh, produce uh, SBOMs. We uh, went the Linux Foundation way, which is SPDX, which is now an international standard. So I'm, I'm 
of course, I'm going to repeat a lot of what was said to, to this morning in the, in the keynote, but I'll try to be brief. SPDX looks like this. Um, it's, um, that's the header of the SPDX document and a fragment of a file listed in there. Uh, it has information about the, the document, an external reference to another one, and then the and file entry with the sashes, the license, etc. So, how can we build a better Kubernetes SBOM? Um, you have, a, if you have a monolithic um, SBOM like we had at the beginning, uh, the first thing that you can leverage is the ability of SPDX to uh, do two things: relationships and packages. Using those constructs, um, you can start splitting parts of your SBOM uh, apart from each other. And the first, the first, the first thing to, to that you should package uh, is uh, your source code. And we, inside of the Kubernetes SBOM, treat it like a like a separate package of that bundles all of the source code together. And then we simply point all of the artifacts as being built from that um, from that package. Then. Another thing, another thing. So this is not what we do in Kubernetes, but it's like a, some of the ideas that we've been having in the, towards the future of how we can handle it. Uh, the next thing that we can do is uh, split out the container images. And so, if you think about that container image, it's simply a, a bunch of tarballs, right? And you could think of those uh, uh, as if they were packages in themselves. And then, if you think about it, there is an index manifest in front of them. And that, um, so what we, the way our tool works is that it marks each of the platform specific images as being variants of the base package, which is the index manifest. That, that, that's the way we try to st structure container images uh, when describing them here. And then after that, you can start making more complex decisions. Like for example, here we have a, a, a potential uh, SBOM detailing the binaries and the RPMs uh, spin, spun into a different document. And in there, we have the dependencies bundled into another package. So the idea is to make uh, these units more consumable and available and, and better suited to process by the tools that could potentially uh, use them in the future. We are still understanding who is going to use them. Uh, are you going to use them inside of your processes outside to make matches uh, with other systems and so on? So um, about our tool, um, all of the code that we wrote to, to generate the Kubernetes releases uh, derived into a original uh, SPDX implementation, which is, which uh, runs inside of uh, the release the Kubernetes release process every time we we cut a release. But we we brought those libraries and built these. Um, this, this uh, general purpose utility that you can use to, to, to run and process your, your uh, repository. So the, the easiest way to, to, add, uh, to create a bill of materials for a project is just uh, CD into your repository file, run bomb generate in the path of the directory, and it'll, it'll spit out your bill of materials describing that. Of course, a bill of materials to be complete and useful, you have to add more things to it. So you can pass in other kinds of artifacts uh, to to be to get included into the into the bill of materials. You can add directories, you can add images that are stored in the registries, and you can add uh, tarball. The, the tarball um, flag down there is a container image, but exported as a Docker archive in your file system, and uh, as well uh, single files. You can add all of those kind of artifacts to your to your um, Bill of materials. Now, the other thing that this thing does is that you can have a declarative SBOM uh, definition inside of your repository and add the BOM utility as a step in your CI/CD pipeline. So it will read the um, the the definition that you're that you, you just you write in the YAML file and construct your SBOM based on the on the artifact set that it finds and are defined in there. We'll see a demo uh, in a bit. Okay, so let me switch uh, screens to, to my demo. So, okay. I don't know if, uh, is it like a big enough? 
A little bigger. There. One more. Okay. So um, this is a test project. Uh, it's a little project that I wrote called Mini Brow, which is emulates the Brow interfaces in GitHub Actions, but the project itself is not uh, really important. The, what I wanted to show you is the way it is structured. So this this project is like a, a single, uh, it's a Go module, standard Go project with its uh, tests and uh, and uh, files in there. So let me remove this S1 because that's not needed now. Okay. So, um, for example, this uh, when you compile this project, it spits out in this output directory here, here. It's binary. Uh, so if you wanted to add, uh, so the, the first thing I wanted to demo is uh, the thing where I was saying that you can just point it to the directory, run it, and have the URL bomb. So if I do bomb generate. So if I just pass it a directory as a, as a source and run it, uh, it'll run and process everything inside. So let me give you a brief uh, overview of, what's doing, of what it's doing there. So it starts by processing the files in the directory, listing everything. It, uh, it goes and fetches the uh, SPDX license list from the SPDX website. Uh, so SPDX has a set of defined open source licenses that the Linux Foundation uh, produces and maintains. And uh, the the SBOM, uh, the our libraries have a classifier in there that uh, read those licenses in w which it downloads in JSON, uh, so that it can interpret any any files, uh, licensing files that, that it finds inside of your uh, project and dependencies, which we'll see in a bit. So uh, downloads the licenses and writes them to disk, and uh, it scans your directory and says, oh, so probably this is the license file for the whole project. And if it finds one of those predetermined, uh, by predetermined means like I did a not quite scientific study of the license names that people use, but uh, they're kind of hard coded there for the moment, but uh, it, will, uh, it will use them as defaults and it will actually look for other files or licensing information instead of other of other files as well, but it, it looks for, so it, it asks itself, what's the license that I would use as a default for this project? Then um, the next step is that the tool will actually read and honor your git ignore files. So if whatever you uh, set in your git ignore, it, the, it, it'll honor those patterns and keep them out of the SBOM when you're running in directory mode like this. Um, then it scans the files, the whole file tree, and adds them to the directory. It, it, right here, it's detecting that uh, the directory contains a, a Go project. Uh, oh, by the way, the only, since this, is, this was written for Kubernetes, the only language that we fully support, and for the moment it'll say it like this, is Go. Um, it'll, it, it will allow you to index uh, container images, binaries, and things like that from in, in derived and compiled from other languages, but uh, if you want the, the dependency analysis, it only works with Go. So um, it reads your Go mode and lists those dependencies as direct. And then after that, it will calculate the full dependency graph and add the transient dependencies as well to your, to your project. So once it's, it's got the information it needs to run, it will actually go and fetch all of the Go modules, download them, or use them in, uh, from the local Go cache uh, to actually go inside of each of the directories of the, pro of the programs and, and look for licensing information to include them in the, uh, in the final output. And um, it found 12 dependencies and uh, it wrote, uh, so it wrote uh, the file. So, the, the first new feature for others that have perhaps previously looked at this tool or not, I, I want to showcase a new feature that I had been working on for the last month or so, is that you can now take, so if you see the help for the bomb utility, you'll see that it has two, uh, two main modes of operation. Oh, completion there, yeah. so yay for supply chain and features getting added. So 
the, the, the two models of, or of operation are generate and document. So the first one is generation of documents and the other is ways of working with documents. And currently what you can do with a uh, document is the following. Document. You can actually outline your S1. Oh, I named it Sodox. Okay. So here it is. So if you take a look at the actual SPDX code, it's like really hard for humans to understand what's going on there. Of course, if you take some time and try to visualize what's going on, that you can certainly make sense of it, especially in a simple S1 like this one. But I thought that this uh, kind of visualization should better help people understand better how their S1s are structured. So. Uh, you have the root document here, uh, which is, describes one package. If you remember when we were talking at the beginning, how you should probably list all of your source code inside of a single package, it, 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 it's what it's doing there. And that, that package has 31 relationships uh, defined, to, uh, which are the actual files of the source code in my little project here. That, that, that's the, the first one. And then it, it lists the, the next set of um, relationships, which are the dependencies of, the Go, of this Go source code. At the end, this, it, it says that it describes zero files because what it means is that you have the root node of the document and from there, the, the next derivation is the, the next uh, branch or, yeah, branch. You, you could see it as having packages or files attached to it. And what it's saying there is that it doesn't have any files. So uh, an important thing to note is the, we are defining, we're like uh, uh, showing here the s in a tree-like fashion, but it's just a simplification to make it easier to understand. If you think about the many, many, many uh, one-way relationships that, that an s contains, it would be, I think, better suited to, to visualize it as a graph more than a tree like this. Uh, since, um, since one package, one file can span multiple, multiple uh, relationships and with other things inside. Uh, but I mean, it certainly helps. As you can see here, we can kind of understand the, the, how the ES1 was built. So um, now the next uh, thing we want to do is, uh, for example, uh, this this little project is designed to run as a GitHub action, so it produces a container image, uh, which are already, or maybe we can choose one of theirs. Let me. So, okay, so this this one is interesting. So what I'm going to do here is run uh, the bomb generate command, and I'm going to pass it a. Uh, one of the uh, distro list images to see how uh, how it will actually generate the next one for a container image re by reading it from the registry. So first thing, the first like this. Um, okay, so what, is, what it did there is that it went, fetched the image and its layers from the registry, downloaded them and uh, generated the S1 from there. So if you take a look at this one, um, we can take a look at the outline of this, the, the way it's structured. So the, this S1 has one package, which points to the actual tag of the image, and that itself is a package which contains all of the images in there. As I was saying before, things can be related to other things. And in this case, um, you can see here the same, uh, the same uh, uh, SPDX element uh, listed twice um, by, uh, because I, the container, the actual container images are variants of the tag. That's, that's the way we structure them. All right, so. Now I want to, let me see the time, okay. Um, let, I, what I want to showcase next is uh, the, the building the yes one from the file. So 
This here is the um, the YAML definition for the um, for the project I'm running. Um, probably, if you take a look here, uh, what we are defining here to be included in the SBOM is the directory where we are running uh, a single file, which is the bin the compiled binary that gets written to the output, and then the container image. We give it a license of Apache 2. Then uh, the other thing is, uh, okay, so there's a new um, a new feature that I also wanted to to showcase today is that we've added uh, we've we've been working on enhancing the Kubernetes uh, supply chain security a little bit. And we've started working on producing in total attestation files for some of our artifacts. So what I've done here is that I've uh, actually included um, those libraries into the S1 tool, so that whenever, if you if you don't, if I don't know if if, if you're familiar with the attestation files, so. The attestation files are a list of components similar to an S1, but but they can it contains information so that you can trace those those items back into the CI/CD chain back and actually find out where those were built. So if you think about an S1, you are already uh, tracing all of the artifacts that get produced in the in the S1, and uh, you already have that information. So what this tool can help you achieve is produce uh, like an empty attestation file that includes all of the files so you can reuse them and maybe build your whole provenance from there. So this is highly experimental and secret code. So let's see if it works because I'm, uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. Um, so let's see what happens. So I I run the tool and I pass it the pass it the um, configuration file so that it detects and reads the YAML configuration and it's doing the Go dependency construction and it's um, adding here oh, this is this is the actual provenance conversion of the artifacts and the container image so if we were lucky we should have the the S1 ready. Okay, it's there. So let's take a look at the at the outline. So here's the output. Um, so as we saw before, here's the image uh, that uh, got listed as the uh, as the package there. Then the source code. Uh, it will always grab the the name of the of the Go module uh, as, as the name of the module. And then here's the the uh, the single binary attached at the end. So if those were to be my artifacts that I'm releasing, my S1B uh, ready to ship. And then the new, the new file that should have it produced is this attestation file right here. A little JQ here to make it more visible. So this is the attestation file that, uh, this is the Intoro attestation file. So uh, if, you, if you see here, it has the, the, the part that concerns and relates to the S1 the, uh, metadata is, is, the, is the subjects here. So since we already um, computed the hashes for all of the files in there, the, it's virtually free for us to include in the, the attestation file and so if you have this file and you simply go and complete the predicate section down here, which is basically the information about the process that run the thing, the date, who did it, and things like that, the recipe, which arguments went, then you, you, if you complete the information to this file, you have uh, the S-bomb and as well the, uh, the necessary attestation to make, uh, potentially make your 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 release uh, salsa level one compliant because the, if all you're missing is the provenance uh, metadata which this thing uh, makes you create and um, yeah I think this is those are the 
main points of, of the tool that uh, the, the way it, they work. Yeah, probably yeah, the, those are the ones. And then a little bit of a future direction of this, this tool. Uh, we are, as I said at the beginning, Kubernetes releases a bunch of um, RPMs and dev files, uh, dev packages uh, with each release. We are not currently listing those uh, because we are still working on the actual analysis of the RPM and, and dev packages. Then we've been in talks with the Linux Foundation uh, SBOM generator folks to maybe see into merging our efforts and that way we could maintain the project and uh, we, uh, we would benefit by gaining more languages in our tool, could be an, 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 an option. And then the final one, well, not the final one, but uh, SPDX allows you to output not in just that format that you saw there, which is called tag value. It also allows you to output in many other formats from RDF, JSON, uh, YAML, and we only currently output to, to, to the tag value. Which, this is a valid add one, but if you need it in the, one of the others, are uh, still missing. And then uh, at some point, I would certainly like to add some validation and verification. There are still divergences in SPDX tools in the way they interpret things. So the way you saw, for example, container images listed here or some of the packaging that goes on in there, different vendors, uh, tool makers have different interpretations of how they see and things. We are trying to, to, to make efforts uh, like the S -bomb, upcoming SBOM Morama, uh, where we will try to compare and make more uh, consensus on the output. But what I would like to add to this tool in a not very distant future is the capability to ensure that if it produces an SBOM, it, it can be re uh, reverted and to make sure that the actual uh, output corresponds to the things it, it understood and saw in your artifacts. And yeah, and that's, um, that's, the, that's it for, for, for what I had prepared. And um, if you want, uh, those are my, my deals. If you want to, to contact me, ask me anyway, just uh, I usually go by Puerco in the most, most everywhere. And um, if you search for uh, the blue link there, it will be when I upload the slides, you can, you can use that one. Uh, I did a version of this presentation where we demonstrate the, how to integrate the SBOM tool inside of a Tekton um, release pipeline and having it as a task. And uh, you, you can see it there. There's also a repo, uh, a repo with, the, the, with that content in there. And yeah, I think we, I don't know if we have time for questions, but, uh, but uh, if not, uh, I'm happy to take any any uh, uh, on the hallway or we